RSVPs, but this looks good. This is good, so we'll dive in and not waste too much time. Um, I think I know almost all of you, but for those that don't know me, I'm Mickey Mellon with Green Mellon Media. Um, we have Susanna and Allie Ashley from our team up front here too. Uh, yay! Susanna's live streaming this for people that want to watch, or we'll have a recording for you guys to watch later if you want. But we do do websites, do WordPressy stuff. Um, if you want to get our email updates, you can text. GMM to 33733. We send a monthly email with WordPress news and tips and all that kind of stuff. You can text that. If you want to sign up for more, you go to our website. There's a sign up at the bottom there, too. Uh, we have allthingswordpress.com as the site for this meetup and for other questions you may have. Uh, we have a Facebook group that's fairly active, a LinkedIn group, and Google Plus community that are much less active. But uh, whichever one you want to use, if you have questions uh, during the rest of the month when we're not here, um, if you get stuck on something on WordPress, post any of those, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, we also just today uh, launched a set Slack team. For those of you that like to use Slack, we started a Slack, Slack team for this group and for Diana's group and stuff for all of us to chat in between. We may use it during some of the meetups in the future to ask questions live as we go, but uh, if you go to allthingswordpress.com slash Slack, you can sign up. For those not familiar with Slack, it's kind of a... AOL Instant Messenger meets Twitter meets that kind of just kind of a live chat delay, not even live chat necessarily, it's kind of a chat room sort of thing. Uh, it's kind of nice. We use it for our Green Melon team a ton, just the five of us. We post dozens us, of the messages Paris a day just to keep each other posted. So this could be another channel for you to use to ask questions and stuff, and stuff. But all things WordPress.com slash slash the form you can fill out, um, and I'll add your accounts after you if you want. Uh, the wonderful food in the back, as always, thank you to ClickHost for that. Yay! Here's a few other words for you. Um, so, clickhost.com, we host uh, websites. <laughs> we do all kinds of WordPress stuff and uh, we optimize for WordPress. And that's why we, we uh, sponsor this meetup because Mickey and the team, they do all kinds of really good things for, for WordPress. So, we love to be involved and to support the community. Um, you can read the slide, so most of our, not most of it, all our, all our hosting is cloud-based and SSD, and if you know about SSDs, you know it makes your hosting very fast. Um, and uh, we have all kinds of things that we add to our hosting that makes it um, that hackers don't have that good of a chance to hack your site and for spam and all kinds of things. So, like I say, you can, you can read it there. I have the bowl. If you want to drop your card, we have a drawing at the end of the uh, meetup for one year of free hosting, as well as some Tom and Chi um, vouchers to, to have some free Tom and Chi. So I'll do it over here. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. You're welcome. Um, some upcoming events. Uh, Diana and Aaron have their next meetup. It's October 8th. They're normally the first Thursday of the month, but Next month, because of scheduling the library, they're the 8th, so just note that uh, a couple weeks from now. They'll be in the smaller room, also because of scheduling, smaller room across the hallway there. Um, talking about PHP and WordPress part two. So if you're a developer and want to learn more about PHP um, and how it integrates with WordPress and how to write code for that kind of stuff, uh, it's a great, great place to learn. Kathy's next meetup. Kathy's in the back there. Hers is the same day, but at night. Uh, Diana's at the lunchtime, Kathy at night. Uh, the beginning beginner series, so you can tell who it's aimed at. It's pretty clear. Um, anything specific, or just, what are you, you going to start with? Um, the basics of the dashboard, it is really for beginning beginners. Okay. The immediate beginners. If you don't show, I envision looking out at 20 people and two of them being beginning beginners. <laughs> gotcha. So, but yes, it will be the basics. Cool. And hers in the evening. Um, you can go on to meet up to see her, her group at over on Lower Roswell Road, where she has had it for a while now. Um, our next one next month, October 15th, the week after those two, we're going to do another climbing at the top of Google um, action items for improving your SEO. So we'll try to give you a, a list of specific things to help your site rank better. Some things hopefully you're already doing well. Um, hopefully there'll be some things you're not doing well that you can fix. Um, we're not quite sure we're doing. We'll, we're hoping to have a, a handout or a PDF or something to take with you to see the checklist. We're, we're kind of feeling that out, but should be should be a good one there. And that one's up on the Meetup page at RSVP for now. Um, and then the following month, uh, November 19th, Carl, Carl Becker was just up here, we we'll talked about uh, WordPress security. Uh, do you want to add anything else with your mouthful? <laughs> I thought it was the perfect time here, so. Yeah, I'll also say a few things about performance. Okay, so security and performance. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Cool. So we'll have that up on the meetup page in the next day or two so you can get details on that. That's not until November, and then we'll kind of go from there. So uh, that's the future, but today, Google Search Console and controlling the spam and analytics. And as always, please stop me along the way. If you have questions, happy to answer them as we go. And I'll try to leave some hands-on time at the end, because for those of you that haven't set this up before, I'll show you how to do it, but then we should have some time at the end to actually help you get things set up. So starting with the Search Console, which used to be known as Google Webmaster Tools. You may have heard that before. It's the same thing. They renamed it a few months ago. Um, seems like maybe half of you have used it and half not. Who has not ever used Search Console? Okay, so a handful. Who's not been into it in the last two weeks? There we go. So, all right. That, that's most everyone. And that's, that's normal, and that's okay. Um, the big thing I'll stress here is signing up for it and getting set is probably the bit most important thing. You don't necessarily even need to go there regularly, although I'll show you some good reasons you should. Um, but just signing up will help you quite a bit, so we'll dig into some of that. Uh, first thing, though, is it's a little confusing, because there's Google Search Console, and there's Google Analytics, and they're really totally separate things. They integrate a little bit in the middle. And it's confusing to see the difference, so uh, Ali whipped up this nice graphic for us that explains it pretty well. Google Analytics is in your site. It's literally inside your site, you have to load the code, it sees what's going on. Search Console is completely outside of your site. Google pretends they don't have analytics, it's just saying, what do we see from afar? It looks like you have 50 pages, it looks like it's kind of loading slow, it looks like you may have been hacked, just things they can see from afar. It's really the big difference. Um, so with analytics, you need to load code on your site and do some stuff. Search Console, you don't need to load any code or anything because Google doesn't need it. They're just gonna say what they can see from up on their perch and how your site's performing and how it looks. Uh, and we wanna know what they're thinking, so that's why we wanna get in there to see what they're finding, because obviously we all wanna rank better in Google. So the one catch is, you don't have to add any code to your site, but you have to prove that it's your site. They don't want you to be able to get Search Console access for anyone else's site, because you can get a lot of details. You have to prove that it's yours. Um, so if you go search for Google Search Console in Google, it'll pull up, log in with your Google account, whatever it may be, and then the top right says add a property, and a property being a website. You choose add a property. You can add a whole bunch in your one account. Um, I, I was trying to read, I have 200 in there. I think the limit's like 1,000. You know, tons of sites. If you manage multiple sites, you can have them all in one place. You don't have to log in and log out. It's kind of like Google Analytics. You can put them all in one place. But if you go to the top right, say add a property. I have a site I want to add. It'll pop a little box saying what's the, what's the address of your site. You put it in, and then say, all right, now prove it. How, is it. how do we know this is really yours? And they give you five different ways you can verify your site. Any of them will work. Just somehow you have to prove that this site is one that you really are authorized to get access to. And the way they do it's a little strange. They'll give you a recommended method for verifying and then four other alternates. And the recommended is different every time, and I have no idea what logic they use because it seems to it seems like a random one. But ultimately you have five choices in here you can click through. Um, and I'll walk through them real quick just so you can see how to do this. And again, um, at the end, if we have time, if you need help with this, I'd be happy to help you walk through. Um, so the one that's recommended for you is HTML file upload. So if you use FileZilla and FTP and that kind of stuff, it's a piece of cake. If you don't, we'll use one of the alternates. But in this case, download this file, upload it to your server, and say verify. It'll say, yep, the file's there, therefore, that must really be your server, you're good to go. Um, otherwise, you can alternate methods, and it gives you four more choices here. Um, an HTML tag you can put in your code, which you can use Yoast, WordPress SEO, has a little box, you can just plug that in, make that easy. Domain name provider, you can do it through GoDaddy or whoever, and that's kind of a pain regardless. I don't think I've ever done that. Uh, Google Analytics can work well. If the account you're logged into now already has Google Analytics access on that site, you can say, yes, I already have analytics, so trust me, and they'll say, yep, you do, you're good to go. Um, this does not connect Search Console to analytics. We'll talk about that later, but it just gets you proof that you own the site. Or if you use Google Tag Manager, which is a whole different discussion. Anyone use Tag Manager? No. Okay, it's, it's okay. yeah, it's, the Google Analytics, isn't that uh, Yoast also has? Yes, but this is just saying, does I log in as Mickey at Green Melon Media here, and I say, yes, go to Google Analytics, you'll see that Mickey at Green Melon Media already has access to this site, so therefore he should get Search Console oh, 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 access. Oh, yeah. This is away from plugins, you're saying, does this Google account already have access via Analytics? So if you do, you can click that button and you're in. If you don't, you can do an HTML tag. It gives you a lot of different ways depending on your setup. Usually one of these will, will get you access. And it's just a one-time thing, again, it's to prove I want access to see the stats for the site, and this is really a site I should be allowed to see. Um, so like the HTML tag, I have one more screen to show you if you wanted to use that one. In the back end of Yoast SEO, they have a thing called Webmaster Tools uh, for Alexa, Bing, Google, and Yandex. And so for Google, if we were to go here and say, yes, do HTML tag, and spit out over here, say, put this long chunk of code on your site. They go to Yoast and paste in that long chunk of code, and they go back and say, yep, verify, and Google will look and say, yep, the code's there, it must be you, you're good to go. 
So one way or another, hopefully get verified. Again, um, I'd be happy to help you afterwards if you get stuck in any of these, but they give enough options that usually you're good to go one way or another. Uh, so we're in. The one new thing, this is a, a fun new development, hackers are loving to get access to your search console as well. Um, and we'll get into some of the reasons, but the main thing is one of the best parts of search consoles, it'll let you know if your site's been hacked. So if a hacker hacks your site, they don't want you to know about it, so they'll as soon as they hack your site, they'll use that to get access to your webmaster or to your search console and turn off notifications so you don't know you've been hacked. And hackers aren't really out about hurting you per se. They can't hurt you through search console too much. Uh, not a lot they can do, but you know, they, they're all about themselves. And so if they, you don't know you've been hacked, it benefits them. So if you ever get an email like this saying, hey, there's a new owner for your site, um, that's a problem. Go check it out and see what's going on. It may be legit, it may be another web company that's working with that client or, you know, but you need to see what it is. Um, just watch that. Not widespread, but it's, it's growing quickly. Uh, so something to keep an eye on. And again, back to the verification. If they've hacked your site, they can put that little verification file on your server to prove that it's their site and things kind of go downhill. So just a quick note to watch for that new owner. If you ever see that email come in saying, hey, someone else is an owner, be aware of that. So we've got access to our site, uh, but even if you verified with Google Analytics, you've not connected Google Analytics. Um, and really what the connection will do is allow you in Google Analytics, where most people spend more time in Analytics than Search Console, because it's frankly a lot better data in Google Analytics. This will pull some of the better pieces of Search Console into Analytics, so you have it all in one place. Um, and connecting is pretty easy. I'm not gonna walk through the whole thing, because you really just hit that settings gear and say Google Analytics property. And it'll give you a list of all the Analytics sites you have access to, and you say, that's the one. It's connected. Um, not much to it. Um, again, I'll walk you through that later if you need help. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And on the same thing, when you hit that little gear, just kind of a side note, this is where you can add other users to have access to this search console site. So a lot of times I'll go in and do the verification set up, say yes, it's really us. And they'll say, well, I want Susanna to get in here to run reports later, so I'll add Susanna to it, or add Allie to it, or I can add another user to have access. Um, other people would go and do the verification themselves, but why make them do that if you say, yes, I need, I need Claudia to be able to get into here, or Jenny, you know, I just say, yep, add them to it. You know, and that's where you do that as well. So. Kind of a little side note. Um, but yes, yeah, so all this, we're finally set up. We haven't actually used anything yet. This is kind of the, the meat of things, um, but using it. Um, the main point here, I guess two points before we dig in. Google Analytics, if you use that, the data goes back forever. It's awesome. You can go back 10 years and see month by month how things go. It's beautiful. Search Console, for whatever reason, only goes back 90 days on most reports, um, up to a year on some of them. That's it, and I don't know why. Jenny, Emery, any idea why they do that? Is there? It's just. Not sure why. I mean, I can't. I can't wrap my head around why they would do that. Because some of these would be. Yeah, just to make us mad, I guess. But the data doesn't go back as far. They did just add an API in the last month or two, so other software like Moz and Raven and some of the other tools can start pulling the data automatically. So theoretically, other tools will gather it and hold it longer periods of time, but. Yeah, so that's, it's more of a short term what's going on now, where analytics you can view more long term trends. And then like with Google Analytics, when we've talked about it before, um, I'm not gonna go through every single page, just gonna hit some of the highlights that we like to look at. And if I miss any, please you know, chime in and let me know other places you like to look in there too. Uh, so the main thing, I tell you the number one thing with Search Console is the messages. This is where if Google sees something wrong with your site, they say, oh, a bunch of pages disappeared, or a bunch of pages randomly got added, or we think you've been hacked, or Google thinks something's wrong, they tell you through Search Console. They won't email you, they won't call you, whatever, and you wanna know if Google thinks something's wrong. So this is why I say, set up Search Console, get logged in, if you just do that and you walk away, that's half the battle, because you'll now start getting emails if Google sees something wrong. Um, you, Claudia, do you have a question? No. Okay, so just, cool. Um, and yeah, it'll give something that can prove the search performance of such and such, you know, some will be a little less, but. If it says suspected hacking, you, you want to know about that before anyone else. And so if you don't have a Search Console account, Google will never tell you and you'll never know. You'll have to find out other ways. Um, yeah? Can the hackers stop that from happening and letting you know? Right, that's what they try to do. Is, yeah, if they get access to your Search Console, they, that's exactly what they want to stop. They don't want you to know you've been hacked. Um, so yeah, and it's, you have to get hacked for them to do it. So it's, it's kind of a rarity, but that's exactly what they do, yes. They, this is why you want it, and that's what hackers don't want you to have, is to know you've been hacked. Or know there's a problem, or know a bunch of pages disappeared, or if Google ever sees a big problem, this is where they tell you, and so if you have this, you know what's going on. Um, and again, if you get verified and you do that, that's a pretty good day. You, don't, you know, All the rest of the stuff is great, but that, that, in my opinion, is huge right there. Just keep an eye on that stuff. And again, they'll email it to you 
um, if there's a new message. So you'll be notified of what's going on. But that said, there's certainly a lot more in Search Console, and we'll, yeah. Sorry, another quick question. No. Is there like a backup email to this that, that will, you know? I think it just sends it to your email for the Google account that you verified with it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. The problem is I think a good hacker could get in and then remove you from it, but then you're going to notice that you've been removed from Search Console. By the secondary email Well, it'll send it to you and say, Miller, you were in Search Console, but you've been removed now by Hacker Joe. And so you say, oh crap, I need to fix that. So you call Carl, he'll fix your site, and then you can re-verify re yourself and get back in. And you know, okay. Losing access to this isn't a huge deal in and of itself. It's usually an indication of a big deal somewhere else, though. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You up? Um, so adding a sitemap is a good piece we can do. Um, Yoast and others will build a sitemap for you. And you can see here, it added, what, 1,700 pages in index. I can't remember what the numbers are, I can't see them. But it, it, Google usually index 90% of your pages, typically, big site, small site, whatever. They you don't usually index all of them. Um, but again, anything you do to help Google understand the pages on your site is good. And the sitemap, for those not familiar, is just a Bunch of code basically basically says, here's all the pages on my site, every blog post, every page, every category. Google, here they all are. Please go look at them all. You know, I beg you, you want Google to look at them all. Because um, ultimately, we've discussed before, Google doesn't search the internet. We've talked about before. Google makes a copy of the internet on their servers, and when you do a search, it searches that stuff and spits out the results and hopes that when you click through, that page matches what they used to have there. So ultimately, if, you don't, if your site's not on their servers, you never can come up in search results. And so this will tell you how many are indexed. It's being indexed to have your pages on Google server. It's a good, good thing. Um, and the sitemap is a good way to make sure Google knows about all your pages, hopefully indexes them all, and then you can rank well and get lots of traffic and be rich and all that. Um, let's see. So to add a sitemap, um, we click on sitemaps on the right here. This is the main screen when you log into your search console. You'll see for any given, you click on a site and go into a site and you'll see just an overview of what's going on. You click on sitemaps there. And then add a test sitemap at the top. You can add multiple sitemaps to a site if you want. Um, with WordPress, it's rare you would need to, but um, back in the day when we used to build websites and then a WordPress blog with it, we'd build a sitemap for the site and then the WordPress sitemap. You could add both if you want, but for those of you that build just with one platform, whether it's WordPress or Joomla or, or whatever, you have a sitemap, you submit it, you're good to go. Um, but in the upper right here, you say add and test sitemap. And it'll pop up a little box. If you use Yoast SEO, Sorry. The address of your sitemap is sitemap underscore index.xml, and Yoast will tell you that. But all you gotta do is just punch that in. It has to be in your domain. You can't change that. That's what you verified. You prove that it's yours. Yada, yada. Um, so yeah, put in the address of your sitemap and submit it. Um, it'll go in. Google will tell you if it's good or bad, if you have a typo in it, if there's any big issues. Typically, they say, yeah, if it's submitted, we'll check it out and come back later and see how they did with it. You'll see on, on the screen how many were submitted, how many were indexed, you know, for pages and images and pages and images and anything else that might be in there. Just to get you some stats. And these are pretty normal. Again, you usually get about 90% indexed. Um, I'm not sure why Google always seems to stop there, but they do. So that's that's normal though. So don't don't worry about trying to get that last little bit. Uh, so that's your sitemap. You add it. not much else to do. Again, if it goes in and it's successful, you're good to go there. You know, Search Console to a large degree is not something you go into often like with Google Analytics, but it's good to get some of this core stuff set up. Um, and with Yoast SEO, we'll talk more about that next month. We'll get into a lot more Yoast stuff, but um, certainly connects into here a bit. Yeah. Is that standard format for any website, the sitemap? For, any, for Yoast SEO, that's the sitemap it generates. Okay. So depending on what plugin you use to generate the sitemap, it'll be a little bit different. That's the one Yoast uses, but any plugin you use for SEO will say, you want me to make a sitemap? Cool, here's the address feed. Say, great, there's the address, plug it in there, whatever it might be, um, it'll work. But that's standard for most of us if we use Yoast. Uh, a pretty cool new feature they have. Um, it's kind of confusing, but it's, it's very powerful. Search analytics. So we're search traffic, search analytics. Again, this is this whole thing is Google looking at a high level on how your site looks from above. So it's going to say how many times has your site shown up in the search results? How many times have people clicked on the search results? What's the click rate in the search results? What kind of devices search our search results and saw you? And this little panel it used to be some separate pages. They combined into this. Awesome mess of stuff here. Um, and I really just had this one slide where you can kind of look and see in, in this chart, you can choose dates, and again, you don't go back 90 days, which I hate, because this could be so valuable to go back a year or two to see longer trends, but you can't. So we'll, we'll take what we can get. 90 days still beats nothing. Uh, but in this case, it shows how many clicks Green Melon has gotten in Google each day for the last 90 days. So you can see if it's going up or down, or you know, in our case, it looks like 
weekdays tend to outperform when people are at work, that makes sense. Uh, you, if you want to switch to impressions, see how many times do we show up in the search results. If we're working on an SEO campaign uh, for a new client, we'll typically see the impressions start to spike up first, where all these great new pages we built are starting to show up in search results, but kind of buried on page 10. So we'll see, all right, the impressions are starting to go up. That means as the pages begin to rank better in coming weeks, we should see the clicks go up. It's kind of a good indication of what's to come. Um, related to see your click-through rate, which I don't worry about that too much because that can have so many factors behind it. But how often are you showing up versus getting clicked? Can be useful to know. And then what position do you typically get ranked in your average page? And again, I don't worry about that too much on a high level. You want to look more on specific things. Uh, but then you can also sort it by pages, by countries people come from, by devices. You could do desktops versus mobile and really just get a good look at what's going on. Um, again, I think the data is probably better, in my opinion, in Google Analytics because that's really who's coming to your site. But this tells you some things analytics can't. Analytics won't tell you how many times you've appeared in the search results and not gotten clicked, which could be useful. Again, in our case, you know, we're working with a new client, we'll see those impressions start to rise, and then some months later, finally, as they rank better, the clicks will start to rise behind it. So if we're working, we see the impressions rising, like even if traffic's staying stagnant, we, say, we know we're on the right track, because they're getting more and more, they're showing up more and more often in search results, so let's just keep at it, and as those ranks get higher, we'll be more successful there. But you can spend a lot of time in here, um, I encourage you to go and kind of poke around, uh, but under search traffic, search analytics is that whole awesome thing there. Um, another one I would look at, the next item down here is links to your site. You can use other tools to say um, who's linking to my site. This will tell you every, all the links you're getting to your site. You can see when they started and, and where they went. Um, so it tells you total links to your site, who links you the most, um, your most linked content. What I like best with this, though, and I'm sure Jenny will appreciate this, is getting this into the Excel. Anytime Jenny can get stuff into Excel, she's happy. Um, and actually, in this case, she's right, too, because it gives you kind of loose guys here. If you pull this into Excel, it gets a lot more uh, detail. So at the bottom of either of these is the More button, which go to the same place. So you click More to see more links. It'll show you some more stuff. But at the top says Download this table. So this kind of shows you what's going on. But if you download, it gives you a, a super detailed report of Day by day, when did you start getting these new links? Or when did Google notice you got these new links? Which should be you know, pretty close, depending on how quick they go. And you go through and see if they're good, bad, if they're spammy, if they're legit, if you need to send someone a thank you card for, you know, if you got mentioned in a newspaper. Just a good way just to see what's going on. Um, not unlike um, Google Alerts, which we talked about before, where you say, Google, look for my name showing up on their places. This is kind of a, another way to go about that same thing. Like, Google, show me where people are adding links to my site. You know, some are kind of cool. We have WP Plugin Directory. We have our plugin we'll talk about in a little bit. They, they added it in there a couple days ago. That's pretty cool. Other ones, Tag Deed, I'm not sure. You know, some of this is probably garbage. But, you know, all of you can look through and find a good one and say, oh, that one's interesting. Let's go check out our profile there, see if we can add more to it, you know, what we can do. Um, a lot of good stuff, though, to see the links coming back to your site and then what you do with that data is certainly different in every case. So, uh, Analytics doesn't have that, then. Correct. Analytics does not have that. This is very cool. Yeah, there's some neat stuff this has, again, that is sort of separate from analytics. Is, analytics is what is happening on my site, and Search Console is like what is happening in Google and the rest of the world related to my site. Okay, you know, so, yeah, this is, yeah, there's some cool stuff in here that Reasons. analytics can't get you. Um, index status is a chart I like to see. And this just shows you, we talked again about getting your pages on a Google server, it's called indexing. So the more pages you have on index, the better off you are in general. And this will show you, this one actually goes back a year. Uh, most everything else goes back 90 days, this goes a year. And this is basically what you, ideally you want to see. This will move from 1500 index to 1700 over the course of a year. So over the course of a year, that 200 new pages get indexed. Probably consistent blogging. You blog a couple times a week, that's kind of what happens. You get those blog posts in the index, you get more traffic, it's beautiful. Um, you shouldn't need to look at this chart because if it were to fall off a cliff, something happened, Google should send you a message saying, hey, a whole bunch of your pages disappear. You know, it should say there's a big problem, but why not take a peek every now and then just to make sure it's going the right way. It could just kind of go up and then just start kind of fading down. And Google won't tell you about that, but you may want to know to figure out what's going on. Uh, so that's under Google Index, Index Status. Um, let me find on the side here. Yeah, under Google Index and then Index Status under there. Like, like Google Analytics, there's a lot of stuff on the left side and submenus and submenus and, you know, not nearly as much, but still quite a bit. Uh, crawling errors is an important one. Uh, again, if there's a whole ton, Google will email you about this, but you still want to check on a smaller scale what's going on. This would basically be missing pages. Google will say, hey, we tried to go to this page on your site, we can't get it. What's, what's wrong? And a few of those are okay, and we have a couple in ours. Could be bad links coming in, or, you know, I don't worry about it too much, but if this is a big number, you know, then you may want to deal with it. Um, and in any case, ideally you want to deal with it 
just to fix those bad links and make them redirect to a, a corresponding proper link or fix the broken page or do something with it. Uh, we use a plugin called Redirection. So the name of the plugin is Redirection um, to resolve those. And I'll show you some screenshots from that in a second. Um, but that can be useful. If you use Yoast SEO, you've noticed with the last couple updates, they've been begging you to integrate your Yoast SEO with Search Console. And this is the chart basically that they'll pull in. So in Yoast now on your site, it'll show you all the broken pages that have come up. So you can see what's going on and try to deal with them from there. Um, same data as Search Console, just trying to make it easier for you to find in your dashboard rather than having to go off there to see it. Um, and again, Redirection is a great plugin. We use it with pretty much every site we do, largely because we have sites that have old URLs. So it has repellents.html and scorpion traps.html. Well, WordPress isn't gonna have those same URLs. We have new pages for the scorpion traps. We're gonna redirect users from one to the other. And you can see, you know, the msds.html has 13 redirects already. You can set those up. What's neat with this plugin is at the top, has a button called 404s. If anyone hits your site and it's a broken link, it'll still show the user at 404.com, but it'll put in a list here for you. You can say, ooh, next time someone goes to that broken page, send them here instead. And they make it real easy. Just, and so next time someone goes to that bad page, whether it was a bad link or whatever caused it, you can now, next time someone tries to go to it, poof, they're taken to the, to the proper place. And so that's the case here. Technically, these would be 404s. If someone said, hey, I want to go to you know, scorpiontraps.html, that page doesn't exist. But to them, as soon as they click it, poof, they're taken to the right page. Google knows where the right page is, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. And where is this page here? Is this in? This is sorry. This is on the WordPress dashboard. This is in that redirection plugin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Using just a we got the info from Search Console about the broken links, <laughs> and then using this redirection plugin, we can fix fix those broken links. Okay. And there's other plugins that do it. Um, some deans will do it. I would stay away from that. But this is just a good solid plugin. It's been around a while. It's updated enough. It does a nice job. Uh, next up is crawling stats. And again, this is another one that, in theory, if things were to fall off a cliff, Google should let you know about it and say, hey, we have a big problem. But again, I like to check it out from time to time. And so Google crawls your site. They have spiders that crawl your site to index your pages. They crawl and visit all your pages and then grab them and index them. So you want them to crawl your site a lot. You want Google there all the time, getting all the pages it can, as fresh as it can. It's good for you if they're there often. Um, and so this just kind of shows you at the top here how many pages a day have they been crawling. And it goes up and down, and you know you don't worry about that too much. Just again, make sure it just doesn't go steady, 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 and then fall off a cliff. Um, you can see in our case, we get an average of about 400 pages crawled a day, which is pretty good. You may be 20 a day, maybe 10 a day, maybe a thousand a day, but just make sure it's consistent, fairly consistent, um, and things aren't going sideways on you. Um, and again, if it goes very bad, Google should tell you otherwise. But I like to go in, just kind of keep an eye on things, and make sure, see how things are going. Um, and again, in theory, this would slowly rise over time, but we only get a 90-day time period, so you can't really see that long-term how things are going, which I hate, but that's how it is. At least we get this. This is still some awesome data they give you for free here. Uh, another good one, some of you mentioned this, I think, is Fetch as Google. This is saying, Google, go pull up one of my pages on the site and show me what you see. What do you see when you look at the pages on my site? Um, and so under Crawl, you can Fetch as Google. And so it'll say, all right, here's your site. What page do you want to get? If you leave it blank, just pull your home page. Say, okay. Fetch and render. That means Google, go grab that page and then kind of build it out how you see it. See if there are any problems. I don't use this often, but if you have a page that's troublesome, it keeps showing bad title tags, just says, this isn't working right in the search results, grab it and see what Google thinks of it. Um, it gives you a lot of, a lot of code. But it'll tell you all the headers that came through. Um, you can research to see what's good, what's bad, you know, 200 okay is what you want to see there. You see a green check mark here. Um, <clears throat> It can be a useful tool at times. It's rare that you'll need this, but it's a nice piece to have in there. How does, how does Google see this page? Um, you see what's going on. Um, again, a lot of things in here. I'm just kind of jumping around to some of the ones we hit more often. Um, Robots.txt tester. So Robots.txt has been around forever. Um, since the, before the web was in it, I think they had it um, in the early 90s even. But it's basically a simple file in the root of your website that says, who can, who can be here and who can't? Um, you can say, Google, stay away. Uh, if you check that little box, uh, it does a little bit different. That little box in the back of Google says, you know, to say, discourage search engines, essentially discourage them with this kind of thing, saying, you know, go away. It's up to search engines to honor that or not, but any reputable search engine will honor what you say. Um, and it used to be people encourage a whole lot of rules in here saying, don't index this and don't index that. I kind of say, just let it go. Just let them index what they want. Um, Yoast will generate this for you automatically, so this is another one you shouldn't need to go into, but if you're saying, my site, just Google's not coming anymore, I don't know what's wrong, go see what they say your robots.txt is doing, and maybe you have another plugin that's screwed up and is accidentally blocking everyone. Um, but in this case, it's just saying, every 
every bot that comes inside that's willing to listen, don't go into my WP admin stuff, which they can't get in anyhow, but just don't try to even index it. It's not worth it. So, okay, I can allow that one. But again, I typically say leave it open, let all the search engines come and get what they want, not worry about it too much. But if you do have problems, it's going to be another way to just kind of test, figure out what's going on. Um, again, if you do have big problems, though, Google hopefully has already emailed you and said, hey, we've suddenly been blocked from half your pages, and you'll already know, but this would be a good way to resolve that kind of issue. Um, and then lastly in here, there's a security issues page, which, again, they'll email you before they post anything here, but if they think there's security issues, you can come here and they'll tell you about what they're seeing, what, what malware they think they found, what they think is going on. Um, and this really comes to what Carl's going to talk about in November, using search security plugins and that kind of stuff to keep your site safe. Um, but if you do have a problem, again, the search security issues in here can help a lot. So most of the Search Console is just about keeping things running smooth, but um, the thing I like best is those messages, so you're, you know before anyone else. You know, we add all of our clients in our Search Console account, so if there's a problem, I want to know about it before they do or before their customers do, or, you know, it's a great way to keep on top of things. So um, we're going to dive into referral spam in a second. Any other questions on Search Console? Or thoughts? Yes. Yeah, so a few weeks or months ago when Google sort of all those warnings about Google can't access CSS and JavaScript yeah. and every client freaked out, um, what, do you want one fix or is it custom to everyone? I think it was kind of custom for everyone, yeah. Yeah, where, yeah a lot of people, Google said suddenly we can't access all these files on your server. Yeah, it really wasn't, that. wasn't a big problem necessarily, but I mean, a lot of clients have got this under their name, so they get the email saying there's a big problem. And it's been a few months, I've forgotten about that. I don't even remember what we did offhand. Oh. Plug that yeah, I think there was a plug. Yeah, yeah, it was a plugin or something that was causing it. Yeah, it wasn't a big concern, but again, if a client gets a big warning email from Google, it, it's a big concern to them. So it's legit to worry about. But yeah, I don't, that's a good call. And then I guess also recently, and unrelated to that though, in the um, the indexing status chart, that long line chart, most of you probably see a little dip a couple weeks ago, and that was just Google messing things up and fixing it. <laughs> um, so sometimes they'll they'll have mistakes in there too, but. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was, I don't, I don't even recall what I did, but that was, yeah, messy for a couple days there. My messages was full of yeah. blocked stuff. Yeah. I have a question it's regarding those web pages that can't be found anymore because I saw, I have quite a few, just I view some were PHP or HTML. Right. And I know those, as you say, to redirect them now to the new ones. Yeah. But I also had pages where I had a special going or, you know, uh, that I then took completely off because I don't use it, I don't offer this program anymore. So I thought about, and I saw there's this tool, uh, Google Webmaster re Removal, something where you type in the URL and it, I thought the way I understood it is it actually deletes that page or should I, like you say, redirect it maybe to the home page if somebody gotcha. comes to it? So the removal tool is saying, Google, this page is in your index, but it doesn't exist anymore. Please take it out. Um, I would probably do that if it's going to go. I'd do both though, really. Because Google may take it out, but there may be other websites that have linked to that page. They're still going to link to it and people are still going to find the page missing. Maybe okay. another site talking about deals of the day and link to your special that day. Well, that page still doesn't link to you. You can take it out of Google, but people still may come from there. Okay. So I would go ahead and take it out of Google because you don't want people to find it that way. But still set up a redirect just in case someone does it. Yeah, just send them to the home page or to the main deal page or whatever is most appropriate. Got it. All right. You know, we're going through like on that one with the scorpions and stuff. A lot of them like, here's the old one, here's the new one, here's the old one, here's the new one. Here's the one we don't have anymore. Um, you know, where should we put it? With the tab light open. <laughs> I know. Um, so you just kind of make your best judgment call on what makes the most sense. Thank you. Know. Um, the other part that will help you there too is if other sites are linking to you, that's a bonus. It's good link juice coming to your site. If it goes to a 404, it's kind of disappearing. If you have a redirect, you at least still capture that, that link juice and help you rank theoretically it's much better. So. Um, other thoughts? How do four or fours happen anyway? Uh, two ways really. One, if you have a page and you no longer have that page, then people are still trying to go to a page that doesn't exist. Uh, that could be if you build a new site. Again, I showed the example of all the old HTML links. Well, those don't exist anymore, so they're 404s unless I fix them. Or if someone t uh, has a bad link to your site or types it in wrong. They may say, yeah, you know, go to millerfinchmedia.com slash about Miller. And if that page doesn't exist, well, you're going to get a 404. You're going to say, why on earth did I get this? I don't know, but you may get a bunch of people going to the bad links, so set up a redirect and send them to the real, real page about you. But if, if I know that the page exists and it's there, how do other people get a 404? But from typing it in wrong? Or well, there shouldn't, they shouldn't be getting a 404 on that page. So yeah, they may be typing something similar that has a wrong, wrong letter in it somewhere. Or, yeah, if it's a page that you can see, it should be generating a 404 to someone else. That'd be a 
trickier problem to diagnose. It's usually, yeah, they, you, you had a typo in the title and you fixed it, but some people are still going to the other version, or yeah, they just simply fat fingered the link and it goes somewhere wrong, or you know, okay. different ways. But again, yeah, for the most part, you want to fix them to the extent possible, not only for users, but for keeping Google happy. And, you know. One other quick question yeah. um, about indexing. Mm -hmm. Does Google automatically, and you're saying about number of pages indexed, right. does, say when you write a blog post with a new URL for that specific post, does Google automatically index that, or you have to tell them something? They'll or? automatically crawl it and decide if they want to index it or not. Typically, they will. Typically, if you write a new blog post, it'll be in Google in a day or two, ranking somewhere, maybe near the bottom, maybe near the top. But it depends on how much they like your site. They may say, all right, Miller has like four links that link to her, and she has 10,000 pages. This is ridiculous. I'm not adding any more. You know? Or it could be the opposite. They say, wow, it's a powerful, great site, and they've added more content. Sweet. Let's get it up there right away. So they'll usually crawl it. When you, if you have Yoast, Yoast has a sitemap feature built in. Most of them do. And when you hit publish, it notifies Google for you. And it'll update the sitemap in Webmaster Tool or Search Console. Google will know about it almost instantly. And it'll usually come crawl it pretty quick and usually index it, but it's it's up to them. They may index it that day, they may index it next week, they may never index it. But as a general rule, if you post a blog entry tomorrow, it should be in there, I would think. Okay, thank um, you. If Google likes you. So, and this is how you make sure Google likes you, by keeping an eye on that. If they think you're hacked or something, they certainly won't. So, you know, this is why you, if Search Console is staying clean and not having any error messages, then the odds of them seeing your new post and indexing are pretty high. So. Um, okay, so Google Analytics referral spam. This is not a whole Google Analytics session, because that's a whole session. Um, we've done it before, we'll do it again, I'm sure. We'll probably do some next month with the SEO stuff. Uh, this is specifically about that referral spam that a lot of you have probably seen in there with four webmasters and traffic monetized and SE malt and all this just crap that shows up in analytics and how to stop that. Um, so we, we've done a lot of work the last few months to figure out how to stop it. And with the two different techniques we'll talk about today, you can stop pretty much 100% of it. So that would be kind of nice. Um, in general, this doesn't hurt you. This stuff's not bad for your site necessarily. It just screws up your analytics so bad they become almost unuseful. You look at our sites, on their site, instead of having a 40% bounce rate, it has a 98% bounce rate. The average user stays three seconds. Clearly not accurate because all these spammers just come and bounce and don't stay at all. So it just throws off your numbers. Just makes reporting hard. Doesn't mean you've been hacked. Doesn't mean anything bad necessarily. But reporting is important to know what you want to do next. And if your numbers are all screwed up, then you don't know what to do next. So. Um, we'll try to stop all that and I'll show you how. Uh, the, what they're trying to do basically is try to get you to visit their sites. They're hoping if you see four webmasters show up, you're going to say, what is that? Why are they linking you? You'll go to their site and say, oh, it's for webmasters. I, oh, I'm going to sign up and pay them lots of money. I don't know who does that, but apparently someone does because they're all doing this. And they see buttons for website, you go check it out and oh, I get free buttons for my website. And you know, they're trying to promote themselves through very, very shady techniques. Um, there's two ways they go about getting in this list. Um, one is to visit your site. They have a little bot visit your site and say, hey, I'm from Four Webmasters. They sent me over and look at the homepage and then Google say, hey, someone sent from Four Webmasters 541 times. They have their bots hit all day long. And then those are easier to block because they come to your site. So if we just block them, they won't come to your site. The other kind is tricky though, it's called ghost referrals where they take in a snippet of Google Analytics code and you all have a number, everyone has a number in Analytics. And they basically start with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and they just hit it all day long, you know, with tons of servers. So they never come to your site. You can't block them because they're just over there hitting analytics all day long, but they still show up in this list. And so there's ways to stop that as well. It's just a little trickier, and I'll show you how to do that. So if we block the guys that come to the site and block the crap that just does the ghost, then this gets a lot cleaner and we're all happier. So, but it's not doing, not doing any harm. It's Correct. Just Throwing off what you're correct. The only real harm potentially would be if they send enough traffic, it might bog your server down a little bit or something. But even that's kind of it's not that much that they send. So yeah, really the only harm, the only real harm is just screwing up your numbers, you know. Um, which again could be depending who you are and who your client is, stuff could be a pretty big deal. Um, but really we're gonna do two things. We'll show you how to stop them. So we'll stop moving forward, but also show you how to adjust your old numbers to kind of filter them out so you can see more realistic numbers from the past when they were hitting you. Um, but first let's stop them. So some self-promotion to stop most of them. We have a plugin we've written that we update most every week to block all the ones that come hit your site. You can block box. There's other plugins that do it that are perfectly fine. There's ways to go into your server and block them by hand. My thought was I want to write a plugin that people can download. Actually, I wrote it for myself because we manage 100 and some odd sites. I don't have to go in every week and say, here's the new one to block on all these sites. I just update the plugin and we update the plugin on all of them and they're all blocking everything. So this blocks, I don't know, 40 or 50 of them. If you install this, you'll see 80% of the junk go away. 
Um, almost instantly, which is nice. It doesn't block the ghosts, though. We can't block ghosts. But it should do a good job there. If you see something still getting in, let us know. We always, you know, we're always having to add new ones. But again, this way we have to add it once, and it benefits all our sites and all your sites and whoever else. Yeah. How does this relate to a kismet? A kismet blocks comment spam. Oh, okay. Yes. Only. Yeah. Comment and forms if you have it into some form things. Yeah, that's. But yeah, good question though. Yeah. Blocking links. Yeah. So if you're familiar with HT access or some server stuff, you can do this yourself. But again, you have to go in all the time and keep updating it. So my thought was, we'll release a plugin. Um, it just it does the job. There's we consider making the plugin talk to our server to update automatically, but that gets stickier and potentially privacy invading. So this plugin just is simple, does its work. If we have new ones, you have to update the plugin to get the new ones. And it just seems easy, good way to do it, works well, adds no weight. Not a block like 80% of it, but you still have others that are in there. And it's like I said, these guys are easy to block. We just block them all, but the other 20% of ghosts is trickier. So we'll go through this part now. In this, we actually have a video on our site, on our blog from a couple weeks ago. Uh, we may link to, I guess, in our post once we put it up, that goes through this process again. And again, we'll have the slides and we'll have this, you know, you, you'll be able to see how to do this because it is a number of steps. Um, but what we have in analytics, if you've ever seen this before, we set up your account and your property, which is your website, and then your views. And most of us only have one view. That's all you need. Like, I want to view my stats for my site. There they are. We're going to make a second view as kind of a backup because what we're going to do in a minute is filter out the bots. If you screw up a filter, filters act on data as it comes in. So if you accidentally filter out some stuff you didn't mean to, you can turn it off, but that stuff's gone forever. If it's, it's, it's filtered out, it's filtered out. So we're gonna make another one that's just a raw view, just says, let everything come into this view, spammers and everybody, in case I screw up, all my data's still there. And then here's the one that really should be accurate. This is really just a backup. Um, but in the admin area, you can click on your views and say, create a new view. And in there, I usually just call it, you can see, um, a GMM raw data. It's called raw data. It's just going to be all my stuff, just as a backup, just in case. Um, the one catch with it is the it'll start collecting data when you create the view. So if I want to see historical data from there, it doesn't exist. We create it now, it starts tracking now. Nothing going backwards. But again, it's just a backup. I've never had to use one, but I'm all about backups and making sure, especially when we do things that are going to destroy data that you can't get back. This will keep us safe just in case. So if you create a new view, make it. And then it'll, it'll put you into that view, which is empty. So then you want to just go back in here and switch back to your main one. So we want to work on your main one, because that's what we want to fix. Uh, and what we're doing is relatively safe. But just in case you type something wrong or mess it up, we'll have that back up in there. So create a raw one, and then click and switch back to your main view. And what we're going to do is when someone visits your site, they, they visit a host name. They look for a host name on your server. They request one. They should be requesting the name of your site almost every time. Um, ghost referrals don't request anything. They're just pinging that stuff. So if we say, well, if they're not requesting our site, let's get all those folks out. Um, the one minor catch is you may have a few other legitimate host names in there. If you use certain remarketing, retargeting kind of stuff, there may be a host name. Um, the other one is um, googleusercontent.com is one we want to include. But kind of look through your list of host names. Most are going to be just garbage. You're going to be Russian names and four webmasters. And you shouldn't have too many in there. But if you go under audience, technology, network, and then choose host names at the top. And I usually pick a long time period. I go back six months just to make sure we get everything that might be legit. And you're only going to have probably a dozen or so in here. Say, so is there anything else in there that could be legit? I know Greenbell Media is legit. That's the one I want. And I know I want to keep Google user, user content. I'm giving you that hint. Most of the time, everything else is garbage. But look through and make sure, like, wow, that sounds like that company I use for AdWords. Maybe they have something going on. Let me call them and make sure. You don't want to filter out anything legitimate. Um, but typically, your name and Google user content is all you need. So write around a piece of paper and a notepad or something and get those. Um, you may have some with W, some without. It doesn't matter. It's just the domain name we're worried about. So if you have greenmailmedia.com and www.greenmail, just the main Greenmail Media is all we need. Uh, don't worry about subdomains and stuff. So write those down. And again, we're only going to catch data from those going forward. So if you forget about one, you're going to filter out that data. That's why we have the backup. You say, oh, I actually filled out all that AdWords stuff. Just other the backup to get to it a different way. It must be a little complicated. Um, so write those down on a piece of paper somewhere. And we'll go back to the back end. And so under view, on your main, the view we're working with here, not the raw one, our, our main one, um, there's filters. Um, you've never used a filter before? We're going to set up a filter. Um, so it's just one filter we're going to set up. Name it whatever you want. I call it the valid host name filter. Because we're going to say filter out anything that's not a valid host name, which means all that junk or those that don't have a host name or anything there. Um, do a custom filter, and this one slide has everything you need on it here, so you can pull this up later. We want to, it's going to default to exclude, but no, we only want to include those where the host name equals this. 
Um, it's really just those two names live in there with a couple catches. It's hard to see on this, and again, we'll have slides up so you can see before you do it. Uh, before your dot com, before your period, you need a backslash, and in between the names, you need a type, a little vertical line. And you can put as many as you want in there. Some sites have four or five, but really it's Google user content, backslash, dot com, pipe, greenmail media, backslash, dot com. And that's all we put in there. So be careful with it. Obviously, this is another place you could go sideways in a hurry, but just take your time and do it. Um, and then a great thing to have at the bottom, um, you don't need any of the, of the other stuff there, verify this filter. Click that and it'll say, it'll give you a sample thing. Here's what you had before. If you had had this filter in place, here's what it would look like now. And if it totally goes to zero, you say, oh, I screwed something up. You know, it gives you another chance to catch yourself. So we're all about pr protecting ourselves here. That should save you as well. But again, we have the, the raw data if we were to need it. Um, that's basically it for the filter. Um, if you do that and you have the plugin, then starting today, those spammers should be should disappear from your analytics completely and you should have good, clean data. There may be a new one that gets in now and then, and that's what we add to our plugin all the time to catch those. So they have to come in a little bit for us to see, and then we it's just cat and mouse. But again, I'm happy to do that one time to save all of our sites and whoever else wants it. Um, and all of us have to keep up with a big list somewhere. Or it'd be silly. So, once you get all this done, it should go to virtually zero of that junk in there from now on, which is great. So now on you have good stuff, but the problem is the last six months is full of garbage all in your analytics. We want to figure out a way to look at that and kind of clean that stuff out. We can't go back and scrub it, but we can find ways to change the how we look at things. Um, so that was with filters. Um, now we're going to look at segments. So filters affect how data is saved. It filters out stuff before it even hits analytics and changes what goes in. Segments are a way to say, here's everything in analytics. I want to view just a, a piece of what's in there. Not changing the data, not filtering stuff out. Just show me a segment of a specific subset of data. Um, and typically at the top, you may have never noticed this, but there's this thing here that says all sessions. You're doing a segment of everything. And usually that's what you want. And if, once you get the stuff cleared out, that's still what you want. In the meantime, though, you've got so much junk in there, your data is no good. So we want to view a different segment. We won't get rid of all sessions or anything. It's always there. Again, we're just changing how we view things. We're going to add a new segment. Um, there's other ones built in. Um, if you click on segments at the top here, we'll give you this list of bounce sessions and converters and direct traffic and other stuff. Um, you can make a new one. So we'll make a new segment. I call mine hide spam bots. It basically is a segment that shows everything except for taking out some of the spam bots. It does a pretty good job. So if you click on the sessions up there, it'll open up this window below, make a new segment. And this sticks with your Google account, not with the analytics account, which is kind of nice actually, because my one Google account, I have access to dozens of analytics accounts, I can use a segment on any of them. The downside is I can't say, hey Allie, pull up that segment I made, because she needs to make her own. So it's good, it's bad, whatever, it's what it is. Um, but you can make one for you and then use it on all the analytics accounts you look at, which is kind of nice. So make a new one um, at the top here. And so what we want to do is, you can choose what kind of segment you want to make, we give it a name at the top. And I just say advanced under certain conditions. And the conditions you make are the source does not contain SEMAL. And the source does not contain simple share buttons. And, and you can just kind of go through, you can look at your list of referrals and say, what is the junk in here? And just kind of make a screenshot or type a list. And then just go through and just add all in. And source does not contain this. And source does not contain this. You know, the list is going to be different for each of us. And I don't think there's a way for me to share this literally with you. So you just make one that works for you. Um, the one catch here, and I haven't found a way around it, is segments can only have 20 ands in it. And a lot of us have more than 20 spam bots. So I've done some things where I'll say, source does not contain the word buttons, and that blocks simple share buttons and buttons for website. You could maybe have an issue if there's a legit button site that linked to you, but you can kind of figure that out. Um, so it may take a little finagling, but again, hopefully this is a short-term need, because now your day is clean going forward in the six months, you won't need this anymore, because all your day is perfectly clean. Um, but this is beautiful as a short-term fix. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, so we do all that, you add them in, you may need to play with it some more. It's going to say, hey, if you do this, we're only going to show you 83% of your data. We're blocking out a chunk now, which is good. That should drop pretty good if you filter out that spam. So save it, and again, it's saved forever across your account. And so now I'm looking at, you can actually show multiple segments at a time. So this chart is showing me all sessions in blue and hiding the spam bots in orange. And so you can actually see everything was hunky-dory early in the year, and then start getting some spam bots popping in, and then in June they were... Tons of it. I'm sure you see similar stuff on yours. And so right here is where we created our plugin that says, hey, let's block all that. Sweet, we block it, but gosh, there's still some getting in here. And so last month or so we did the filter, and now you can see nowadays all of our data and our data with spam filtered out is the same because there's no more spam in there. Yeah. Well, fault me for not paying close attention. 
Do that. When we do the conditions, mm -hmm. if I have your plugin installed, why would I be using those conditions? This is to view old data. Because the plugin will stop things going forward. So you're fine. If you don't look at it that much, you're fine. If your data going forward is fine, but your client says, hey, tell me a report of the last three months on my site. You think, oh crap, the last three months is SE malt for days. This will smooth that out. So you can okay. see where looking backwards of all this junk, but really now if I filter it, it gives me a good view. So yeah, so this is a short, hopefully a short-term solution because now you fix the long-term solution with the filters and stuff. And this is, yeah, this is kind of thing, you're welcome. Um, so it's fun to look them side by side, but you don't need to do that. We don't need to see all sessions. So what I'll do on most sites these days is just hide all sessions and say, just show me the hide spam box. Just show me, show me what my data is without the spam box in there. So now I can pull this up and it lets me know you're only seeing 73% of your data. We're blocking 27%, but that's okay. I know it's blocking the bad stuff. So now I have this data. And I can look at the bounce rate and run reports. I can look at referrals. All my data is pretty clean now. Um, it's not perfect, but it's going to get us pretty close. Um, and now you have good data to use to run run reports off of and to print stuff for your clients and to look at for yourself and see what's going on. Um, and hopefully, at some point in the future, that'll go back up to 100 because it's not having to block anything because you've already blocked it yourself. Um, so yeah, I know it's a little confusing there, but that basically is it. So between the filters to stop stuff in the future and the segments for the past, you should be good. Does uh, Google search penalize you at all to, if you have a lot of these spam box? No, search does not. The search technically doesn't know about them. Again, like Search Console doesn't know that you have them. Analytics does, but Google doesn't really, I'm sure they know, but they have to at least pretend they don't know because it's not, it's no. How about that? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't really know about it, so they don't. No penalty. Yeah. Yes, but again, it just throws your stuff off. But yeah, no penalty for that kind of stuff, just annoyance. And no penalty, no harm, just pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, so that's that's all I've got. I wanted to try to leave some time. If you have other questions, I'll answer them now. And then if you want to stick around and try to set up some of this, I'm happy to help, or others can, I'm sure. Thoughts? Bye, Periscopers. I just have a quick question. Because